What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to go over the best possible settings to get your recordings with OBS looking nice and crispy. And speaking of nice and crispy, if you guys are also streamers and want to take your streams to the next level, let's give a shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Owned.TV. Owned.TV is your one-stop shop for fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Kick, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're looking to pick up some new alert graphics, don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You can find single graphics such as alerts, emotes, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about these overlays is that they are completely modular, so if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you could change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you're looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. And don't forget, use code HAMMER at checkout for an additional 50% off your order. Now, back to the video. All right, guys, so I'm here with my OBS opened up. I'm using it to record currently. And the first thing you guys are going to have to do is head on down to the bottom right and we're going to enter our settings. In this first tab here, there's nothing really important when it comes to your recording's quality. However, you can change your theme to match whatever you like. I enjoy using this Yami theme because I think it's really easy on the eyes. Another setting in this tab is going to be source alignment snapping. This is going to be a setting that allows you to position things in a more evenly manner on your scenes, right? If you enable snapping and change the sensitivity to whatever you like, it's going to kind of snap objects in your scene to specific places. If you'd rather move things around free, you can uncheck this box right here and you're going to be able to move things wherever you want with no snapping at all. The stream tab we're going to completely ignore because this has nothing to do with streaming. This video is for recording settings. If you guys want a nice streaming settings video, I did just upload one on the channel. Head on over to your output tab on the left side here. Make sure at the top that you are set to advanced and not on simple. And we're gonna be by default in the streaming tab right here. We wanna switch this over to the recording tab. This is where we're going to mess with all the settings that are going to affect how our recordings look. In the recording tab, you're first gonna notice that you can choose a recording path for where you want your recordings to be stored. Mine go to my E drive. So select browse right here and select wherever you want on your computer for these recordings to be saved. The recording format, I'm using MP4, but I do suggest using FLV simply because if this recording were to get corrupt uh, in the middle of it, right, let's say my power went out right now, it's not going to save what I have recorded so far. MP4s can get corrupt very easily. If you're using an FLV, the file will be intact. However, I'm using MP4 just for the purposes of this video. For your video encoder, this is extremely important. I'm using an NVIDIA GPU, so I'm using the NVIDIA NVENC H.264 encoder. If you can use your GPU's encoder, whether you have an NVIDIA or an AMD, you're going to want to use that over X264. If you select X264, what that's basically doing is using your CPU instead of your GPU to encode the video. This could result in some serious frame drops in any games that you are playing. However, if you are trying to record videos of just you talking in front of a camera, you probably can get away with using X264 and get some really nice quality. However, these GPU encoders have come such a long way and I always record with them and my videos come out in great quality. As for your audio encoder, we're using FFmpeg AAC and then you're going to be able to rescale your output here if you want to. I suggest doing it in another portion of OBS. So for this video, you're going to set this to disabled. If we scroll down quite a bit more, these are gonna be the encoder settings. For our rate control, you're gonna to wanna to set this to CQP. I do suggest going no lower than CQ level 16. 16 is going to give you near lossless quality, really, really high quality video. Um, you can set this to around 18 or 20. There's a very small difference between 20 and 16, and it's a lot less demanding on your CPU. But as you guys can see right here, I'm recording this video and I'm using 16. Depending on your PC's specs, I would suggest setting this to 20 and then working your way down to 16 to get a little bit more quality. Just remember that the lower you set this number, the higher the file size is going to be. So these recordings that I'm recording are pretty massive. So if you don't have a ton of space, 
I suggest sticking with 20 and up. As for our keyframe interval, you're gonna set this to two seconds, and then our preset, you can set this to P7 for the best quality possible, or you can set it to P6 or even go down to P5 if you're struggling or maybe getting some FPS drops, but I suggest starting with P7 and then working your way down to P5. For tuning, you're gonna to wanna to set this to high quality. For multi-pass mode, you're gonna set this to two passes at full resolution. Your profile is gonna be set to high, Look ahead is going to be unchecked and cycle visual tuning is going to be checked. For our GPU box, we're going to set this to zero and max B frames set to two. Now we can go on the left hand side and jump over to our audio tab. In this tab is where you're going to set up the audio for your recordings. The sample rate should be set to 48 and your channel should be set to stereo. If you are using a gaming headset and gaming microphone, you're going to select your headset or wherever you're hearing your audio through right here in the desktop audio section. And then your microphone, if you're using a Yeti or a gaming headset microphone or a separate microphone, you're going to select your microphone right here in the first mic auxiliary audio input. Now moving on to another really important tab here for recording, we're gonna head over to the video tab on the left hand side. For your base canvas resolution, you're gonna want whatever you're gaming at or wherever your resolution is. If you're gaming in 2K or 4K, you're gonna want your base canvas resolution to be that resolution. Your output scaled resolution, this is gonna be what you want the video saved as. So if you're gaming in 2K, but you wanna record in 1080p 60 FPS, you're gonna set this base canvas resolution to your 2K resolution, and then the output scaled resolution is gonna be 1920 by 1080. And when you're doing some downscaling, you're gonna have an option to enable this downscale filter right here. You wanna select the top one, which is Lanxos. It's going to be the best quality filter to apply to your downscaling. And then obviously to change your FPS, you can select that right here under common FPS values. If you want your recording to be 60 FPS or 30 FPS, you would select that right here. For the next tab, hotkeys, this is a pretty cool section. If you have some extra keys maybe on your keyboard and you wanna bind them to do certain functions within OBS, this is where you would do that. You can basically have it start recording, stop recording, mute your microphone, enable or disable sources within your scenes. Uh, plenty of stuff you can mess around with here. There's literally every function within OBS you can bind to a key on your keyboard if you have some spare keys. The accessibility tab, we can completely ignore this. And then the last tab is gonna be the advanced tab. In the advanced tab, one really important thing to note here is that under general up top, the process priority, make sure this is set to normal. If you change this process priority and set it to above normal or even high, what's gonna happen is your PC is gonna allocate more resources to OBS than whatever it is that you're doing. So let's say you're playing a game trying to record and you have this set to high, it's going to be sending a lot of its resources to OBS, so you're gonna lose a lot of frames in game or in whatever else you're doing, you could start seeing some serious lag. So I suggest keeping this on normal. Moving on down to the next box here under the video tab, the renderer I have set to direct 3D11. My color format NV12, my color space is set to 709, my color range is set to limited. If you set this to full, you're gonna run into some issues later on down the line where things are gonna look darker than they should. So I suggest keeping this on limited. Our SDR white level is set to 300 and our HDR nominal peak level is set to 1000. Under this recording box right here, there's another really nice setting. Automatically remux to MP4, record as MKV. So basically what this will do is let you record as an MKV and then it will automatically turn it into an MP4 when you're done recording. I do suggest using this if you're using MKV for recording format. Because like I said earlier, it's a little bit safer because if you record in MP4 right off the bat, and let's say your PC blue screens or you lose power, you're gonna lose all of that recording if your PC ends up crashing. If you have this box checked and you're recording as an MKV file, it will save whatever you've recorded so far. So imagine if you're doing a one to two hour recording of you playing a game or explaining something, uh, this could be really, really helpful. Other than that, those are all of the settings you're gonna need for your recordings to look amazing. So that's pretty much it guys. I hope I was able to help you. And if I did hit that like button, it really does help me out quite a bit and subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. And if you guys want to come hang out with me live, I do stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash hammerdance. I'll drop a link to that in the description below this video, but thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I want you to keep those hammers up and I'll see you next time.